What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at using radio buttons without submit buttons for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at radio buttons in a little more depth without using submit buttons. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership to all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video we looked at radio buttons, and I showed you how to use them with a submit button. So you make a selection, click the button, and then something happens. What if you don't have a submit button and you want to just click something and have it do it automatically? How do we do that? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this video. And it's actually pretty simple, a couple of moving parts, but not too bad. So head over to our terminal I'm in my CPyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And let's open up the designer. And so there we go. And then I'm going to close this out. And let's just open up the designer file that we did in the last video, radio.ui. If you didn't see that video, check the playlist in the pinned comment section below uh, to see how we made this. But I just pulled this up. Grabbed, uh, let's see, here are the radio buttons are right here. You know, you just drag a few over, push buttons, drag, drag a few over, labels was down here at the bottom, drag that over, and then we just modified them there. So I'll leave that to you. Now, in this video, we don't want a button. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that button. And I don't know, let's bring this up a bit, maybe. There we go. Okay, so everything else here is going to stay the same. So let's just go ahead and save this. Let's go file, save as, and I'm going to save it as radio two this time. So then we head back over to our terminal. Okay, so now let's convert that UI file to a Python file. And that's PYUIC5 dash X. And the name of the file was radio two dot UI. And we want to dash O output that to radio two dot Python. Okay, so let's run that file now and see if that works. So radio2.py. And okay, it looks like it worked. We can click on these things, nothing actually happens, but we're good to go. So let's open that up in our text editor. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So go to file, open file. We're in our C PyQt5 directory and we want that radio2 dot pi file and here it is. Okay, so here we've got our program. And what we need to do is come down here and create a little function. And let's define this as btn state. And this is the button state, right? So anytime the button state changes, this will pick up on it. So we want to pass in self, we also want to pass in a b and I'll show you what this is all about in just a second. So now we need to sort of tell our buttons to call this thing whenever they get clicked. So we could do that up here in our main function here. So let's just come down here. And I'm just going to make a comment and say set button states, something like that. So this is going to be self dot radio button, because that's the name of our first button radio button. And now we want to call toggled. So that's when you click between one, you're toggling between them. So Toggled is a signal with PyQt5, it sort of listens for it. And we can set this to dot connect. And inside of here, we can run this function very much like when we press the button in the last video, we're calling a function. And we do that by just calling lambda. And this is a lowercase l, I know it kind of looks like a capital L, but that's lowercase. And then we just want to call self dot btn state. And then we want to pass in self dot radio button. So we're passing in the button itself, all of the button, right? So that's why down here, we're passing this B. We're passing the self as always, but we're also passing this B, which is the button itself. So we'll see what that's all about in just a second. So that was for button one, we need to do this two more times, right? So radio button underscore two and radio button underscore three. Here we need to pass in radio button underscore two and radio button underscore three. Okay, and the reason why we did that is because that's what our buttons are called radio button, radio button two and radio button three. So okay, anytime one of these buttons gets clicked, it will then run this thing, this button state function, and it'll pass itself in. So okay, now we can come down here to this button state function. 
and we can do whatever we want. So let's say if b dot is checked. Remember we looked at that in the last video to see if it's checked or not, true or false. If it's true that it's checked, that means we've clicked on it, right? So what do we want to do? Well, remember we've got this label right here and we can set the text. So let me just copy this and we want to pass in something. Now, we may or may not know what these buttons say, right? One says pepperoni, one says cheese, one says mushroom. But we can get whatever they say just by calling b dot text. And so we're just going to do that, right? And we're calling b dot text instead of radio button dot text or radio button two dot text is because we passed in the button into this function right here. So we can reference it instead of its name, b is its name now. That's just sort of how functions work, right? So, okay, I think that'll work. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, and let's run this guy again. So now we can click this, boom, and it says pepperoni. I misspelled pepperoni. <laughs> Cheese and mushroom. So, very cool. Just that easy. So, now we're just passing in the thing and putting its text up there. Maybe we want to do something else when we click cheese, for instance. So how do we do that? Well, we can come back in here and we could say if it's checked, we can do now another if statement inside of here, we can say if b dot text, and let's say equals cheese. Well, then let's do something else. Instead of setting it to cheese, let's just say I love cheese, right? And then here we can go else and pull this guy in here. So this else will say if we pick pepperoni, it's not cheese. So it'll just put pepperoni on the screen. If we pick mushroom, that's not cheese. So else we'll just put mushroom on the screen. Otherwise cheese, it'll say I love cheese. So go ahead and save this, head back over here, run this guy again. So we click on pepperoni, it says pepperoni. We click on cheese, I love cheese. We click on mushroom, it just says mushroom. So you don't have to just put the text, you know, but, uh, you, and you can do anything you want based on which button is clicked, which radio button is clicked, and that's how you would do that. So pretty cool, pretty easy. One more thing, we can still set one of these by default. So if we just run this, you can see none of them are checked by default, right? We can still set the one by default if we want, like we did in the last video. So let's come up here and let's say set default radio button checked. So we could say self dot radio button, let's say the first one dot set checked and set that equal to true. So when the program runs, it'll set that pepperoni to true. And now if we run this thing, we see pepperoni is automatically checked and it says pepperoni down here because it's already been checked, right? So boom, that one says I love cheese. That one says mushroom. Very cool. And this guy again, pepperoni checked by default says pepperoni. So that's how to use radio buttons without a button to select to make your selection. Maybe you want to use a button. If so, watch the previous video. I showed you how to do all this stuff by then clicking a button. Maybe you don't want a button. You want to just be able to sort of click around through here and have things happen as you get clicked on. And so that's how you do it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.